So you have x86, which is Intel's. So you have SH4. You've got MIPS. You've got ARM. You've got um, I'm missing someone in there. Now you've got I think you've got those four. So you've got all these different kind of platforms, different operating systems: Linux, Android, Windows CE, and then a whole host of middleware on top of that. So if you look from the entire perspective of the lowest level, here's a bunch of silicon where there's a huge amount of diversity. Next level up, you have an operating system where there's a huge amount of diversity. You have a middleware where there's a huge amount of diversity. And a UI layer where there's a huge amount of diversity. And on top of that, there's a whole bunch of different hardware-specific decoder functions like HD video decoding, graphics acceleration, all this kind of stuff. So you can kind of see when we kind of look to the higher levels of what the user experiences, there's, a, there's kind of a platform, namely Flash, that kind of brings a lot of this together. So at the highest level, you know, if you go back in time, let's go all the way back to 2008 CES. And CES 2008, you know, a lot of the first internet connected TVs came to the market with like Yahoo widgets and a whole bunch of other streaming services that were delivered onto the TV screen. And you kind of saw the initial pickup of an engaged television, non um, standalone television experience. And again, I, when I say TV, I say it in the broad sense. And what you saw there was like now an evolution of the connected nature but the way that it kind of worked and the way the market evolved was a lot of the devices that shipped in the 08 model lines and some of the late 07 models, they actually required Ethernet connections. And so remember who the typical consumer of a television is. It's a lot different than your typical mobile consumer. The refresh rates on the hardware, mobile is 18 to 24, 26 months, uh, makes their carrier subsidized. Televisions are seven years roughly. The interesting about televisions is they almost never leave the home. The TV that's put in your living room goes into a bedroom. The TV that goes in the bedroom goes to the kid's bedroom. So a TV sits inside your home for a long amount of time. And so the typical person who purchases a TV is not always the leading edge consumer. You know, they're the kind of standard, you know, American. If you ask them the, um, if you ask them the mobile, uh, TV OEMs, they'll say their average US consumer or US purchaser is a 35 year old individual who's not necessarily on the leading edge. And so when these TVs first came out in 08, you know, hardwired ethernet connections, most people, except for gamers with the Xbox and PlayStation 3, don't have hardwired Ethernet connections in their living room. So the 09, so you saw connection rates of how many people are actually connecting their TV onto the uh, onto the internet and streaming, say Netflix or you know Love Film in the UK, 20, 30 percent, give or take. The 09 models, you saw an evolution where wireless actually showed up in the ecosystem, and that basically changed the connect rates altogether. So a lot of people, a lot of hype in 08 around, you know, man, I'm finally going to get the internet on my TV. Well, you know, the content creative community wasn't super excited because they put all this work in and not a lot of content delivery. Move forward to 09, wireless shows up, connect rates in 60 to 70 percent. A couple of products that uh, companies like Adobe released on the market, and you're seeing, you know, a huge plethora of content now delivered. You know, I think one of the most successful content companies here was Netflix. So just to get a little um, litmus test, how many of you have some streaming capability of Netflix in your living room? whether it's yeah, Xbox 360, your television, your Blu-ray player. Yeah, exactly. Right here, Xbox. And so, um, you know, that's kind of set the, set the gold standard of what streaming uh, video capabilities in the internet were. And a lot of that, you know, comes from the abilities of the Flash platform. So a lot of content companies have used Flash as a platform to deliver into the living room. And I'll tell you about some of our products that we have already in the market. Now, the market and the ecosystem as a whole, and again, I'm giving a lot of context because I think everyone is intimately aware of the um, mobile ecosystem and the desktop ecosystem. TV is nascent and growing. So there's 420 million television set-top box Blu-ray players that are expected to be connected by about 2012. The numbers, actually, if you ask the analysts in 2009, that's what they would have said. If you actually look at some of the data that we're seeing now from analysts like iSupply and, um, and some of the other groups, the numbers and the the numbers are going up and the uh, growth rates are getting faster. A lot of the growth is coming actually from the Blu-ray segment because the Blu-rays have a much quicker turnover than what's inside the living room. So a lot of really cool stuff and you know, this is actually a growing ecosystem. Now, one of the other interesting perspectives here is the fact that the, where does video delivery come from? So I like to describe the entire living room ecosystem. So if you're a typical living room, if you're anything like me, and I think you know, we're probably on the cutting edge of technology, but you'll see this kind of evolve in a living room scenario. You have your TV, that's a big screen. You have your laptop that sits on your coffee table or on your lap, and your mobile phone. Each of these three kind of experiences has a different manner in which you actually engage with it. So TV, when I want to watch something on Netflix, I actually lean back, right? The remote's on the ground, I'm actually just kind of hanging out and watching it. 
My mobile phone, I'm sitting kind of upright, I'm typing away at it, maybe just browsing a text message somebody sent me. My mobile phone, I'm leaning, or my desk, my laptop, I'm leaning forward and typing into it. It's kind of, I'm actively engaged. So what you kind of see is there's actually a very different, very segmented way that consumers actually engage with content when they're actually in front of these kind of physical screens or these devices. The most interesting thing you see is where does the plethora, where does the majority of video usage in the living room come from? So I know this is probably an obvious question, but well, actually, let's do, let's do a little show of hands here. How many people think that your, your laptop is the primary video device in an average American consumer? OK, all right, so just, just making sure. How many people think the TV is? Now, by show of hands, how many, let's, let's do it this way. How many people think that the US household consumes over 25 hours a month of TV? 50 hours. Is it 100 hours? 150 hours? Got one hand up. The answer is the US household consumes 158 hours, top right, of video in the home on the TV screen. So that's the US household on average. The interesting thing about this metric is it's gone up over the last couple of years. We're actually seeing more people watch more TV in the living room, live TV, broadcast TV, in the last couple of years. So the really interesting thing about that is there's also socioeconomic forces at play here. So you've had, um, you know, oh wait, we in recession, et cetera. That's pushed a lot of the numbers in terms of casual household entertainment consumption up. The interesting part is the amount of time that people spend in front of web video. Now web video is kind of the bread and butter of Adobe and you know, in, our, in the Flash ecosystem. 22 hours a month. So when you ask us, Adobe, how do we want to be in, allow our content creators to be in front of consumers, there's an obvious engagement point where enabling Flash inside the living room is actually a, is a big deal. So I'll ask you, there's a couple other fun stats here that I have. And so, you know, the first most interesting one is the video engagement, which comes from, you know, 158 hours on the TV, live TV, 22 hours on uh, from web video. That's awesome. That's good. So we obviously know from a strategy perspective there's something interesting to do there. People are actually engaging with pay TV services, pay game services, sorry, pay TV, pay TV apostrophe S game services. So if you have, does anyone have satellite service like DirecTV or Dish? So, okay, we've got Matt and some other folks here. So there's channels on there which lets you actually tune in and actually engage in the game content, you know, as if it's a subscription channel. That's growing, and it's surprisingly successful for the, you know, DirecTV. So you're kind of seeing two kind of worlds of content being broken up. One is video. That's kind of obvious, right? I think if anyone asked what the main use of TV would be, it would be for, for video. But you're seeing this growth in gaming on, on, on uh, the television screen. Now, we're kind of tech people, you know, we, uh, you know, I have no fear hooking up my laptop or my, or my computer into my um, living room. This third piece of, st this third statistic actually shows a really interesting bit of information, which is how many U.S. households actually connect their PC to their TV in order to watch TV content, in order to watch web content. The answer is about nine, nine and a half million households. There's about 120, 130 million households in the U.S., depending on who you ask. So there's a lot of actual, there's, there's a lot of, Households which are not getting access to web video services, so that's you know unfortunate, right? Because Netflix, uh, Hulu, YouTube, take your pick, all these kind of capabilities provide really high value consumer services, but people are technologically not capable in the mass market sense of connecting their TV or connecting their laptop to their TV. So, obviously, some context here that lets you understand where we are in the ecosystem. Of course, Adobe looks at these numbers and like, hey, we should do something about this. So I think you guys saw this slide a little earlier, this the next two slides. So what we've kind of been doing, and I'll give you the context here, is we've kind of been extending the platform as a whole to the digital home. And there's a couple of uh, incarnations or instantiations of that <coughs> effort. So what our goal really in our strategy and vision is to bring this kind of melange of broadcast TV, internet services, really high quality user experiences in three main categories, video, gaming, and social. These are the kind of three main categories that we are really looking forward to enabling on television devices. Now, we actually started this effort uh, about a year, two and change ago, two and a half years ago. And we had our first major product announcement at, um, at the uh, CES show, uh, you know, CES or NAB, last year. And what we announced there was the enablement of the Flash platform on the digital home. And one of the really interesting things that we got out of this is a lot of learning, a lot of experience in how to enable kind of these internet services in a way that is palatable to people who make TV devices. So I'll give you a bit, you know, I was saying, you know, four different CPU architectures, a couple of different operating systems, middlewares, UI, UI providers. Very different than, say, um, you know, 
Android. Like Android on your mobile phone is, while not completely effectively from the hardware to software and user experience perspective, nearly a vertically integrated solution, right? Google provides the hardware, the chip manufacturer provides the drivers, OEM provides an experience, but it's basically Android from almost the kernel all the way up to the user experience. The TV is not like that. So what we did was we created a product that kind of addresses the way that the TV ecosystem works, which is called Flashlight for the Digital Home. We've had a lot of really great success here. We've had a lot of products that have shipped in the last kind of year, last year or so, that have actually enabled this product, you know, to bring this uh, flash experience with HD video, user interfaces, some of the gaming stuff onto this ecosystem. So, you know, you can see a good sense of kind of what we've done here. So this was kind of, you know, where we've come from. So effectively, Adobe's had about, you know, a year, two years or so, two plus years, honestly, of experience bringing kind of flash-enabled experiences into the living room. So what we're really excited about today, and what I want to show you, um, is the next kind of evolution of this kind of enabled, you know, Flash-esque content. And so what I want to show you today is Google TV. And a lot of people were at, I think, probably a fair number of you were at I.O. this year, and you guys got to see some of this. So, you know, what effect, oh, sorry, there's a fancy animation there. Um, yeah, there, there we go, it's marketing. So <laughs> what we've done with, Google TV is, um, you know, Google TV from their website, and Google TV if you talk to the guys, is this real ability to bring the content from the web, content from the internet, and kind of enable it on these kind of devices that are in the living room. So Google's done a fantastic partnership with us, uh, Logitech, Sony, uh, Intel, and themselves, this group of five different companies to enable Flash and, well, and to enable Android experiences on their on, on living room devices. So what it is is basically an Android 2.1 platform uh, that runs a Chrome browser. Flash is integrated onto the platform on the Chrome browser. And what this really kind of enables is a fulfillment, so to speak, of our vision to bring to the platform, to the living room, uh, is video gaming and social content. And I'll take you through some. Uh,